I see blood or there's blood. Surely goodness and mercy. Surely goodness and mercy. And I know who my husband is. Good evening, everyone. We're so very glad that you are here tonight. Looking forward to a wonderful service here together and looking forward to God's richest blessings in our lives. Welcome to the Community Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Joe Jackson, and we are glad that you are here, here on this beautiful... How many are enjoying the spring warm weather outside? How many did not recognize yesterday compared to today how many did not notice the like like it we feel like we're on different continents different seasons yesterday i got up i i asked my smart device what's the weather for today and my smart device informed me that there would be less than a quarter inch of rain slightly scattered showers and it would be warm that's exactly what the lying alexa told me so i left my raincoat at home and wore my light gray sport coat and went on Seven errands all throughout the church. It was great. You know what I can tell you, folks? Alexa may lie, but Jesus doesn't. So let's be grateful. Let's sing about our good Savior. Let's sing about surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'm not seeing that in my system here. We must have had a glitch in our slides, guys. So let me see if we got this real quick here. I have when I see the blood and there is a fountain on mine. Can we do those ones or no, ma'am? No, which ones do you have? Let's all stand together and we're going to look in your hymnals to hymn number 447. If I'm correctly on the number, hymn number 447. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's not the right song. The songs aren't in there tonight. So we're going to sing hymn number 447. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. If I have the right number, we'll find out in a second. I'm doing this from memory. Hymn number 447, Surely Goodness and Mercy. Let's sing this song out together. A pilgrim was I and a wandering. In the cold night of sin I did roam. Till Jesus, the kind shepherd, found me, and now I am on my way home. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. When I walk through the dark lonesome valley, my Savior will walk with me there, and safely His great hand will lead me to a mansion He's gone to prepare. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Wonderful singing out there. You just did a good job. You may be seated as we get ready for the next song, which is, which one, man? I know whom I have believed in and am persuaded that he is able. That's hymn number 442. While they pull it up on the screen, every once in a while we have a computer glitch up here, and it makes for a little bit of fun for us. Most of the time, we don't even let you know it's happening. But tonight, we figured we'd let you in uh, a little bit on some of the background stuff that goes around up in here. It's hymn number 442, I know whom I have believed in. We already have it up on the screen. Thank you, Dave. We'll sing this song out together. Hymn number 442, I know whom I have believed in. grace to me he hath made known nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own but I know I am believing and am 
persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I know not how this saving faith to me Brought peace within my heart, but I know whom I have believed in and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Wonderful singing, wonderful singing tonight. We're so very glad that you're here today. And I have just now figured out exactly what happened on this thing. So that's good to know now. I at least know what happened. Let's go ahead and let's go together here to our prayer time. And uh, we're so very grateful for you coming together. Susan, they're going to need you in the back for that one class. And uh, we're grateful that you are here today. And we're looking forward to many things that God's going to do. We have many prayer requests today. And I am looking forward to God doing some great work in our lives and through these different prayer requests. So I hope that you'll have uh, be able to see these different ones here. Some of the things that we are thankful for, if you didn't see it yet, was our new church trailer. Well, new to us, new used trailer. And uh, so grateful for that. A pastor applied for a grant last year, and uh, we were given a grant to help our food pantry. And so we made the decision to upgrade. Our, our old, old trailer was over 20 years old. And uh, we figured after over 20 years, for those who've worked with it, uh, no, it's a nice trailer. It could be used for people who want to use it just occasionally. Uh, but what we were using it for with all the food we use it for, we needed an upgrade. So we uh, picked up this other trailer. Actually, we were able to get it from a, a man who kept it stored in his pole barn for uh, many, many years. Never, he say, took it out just three times a year just for trips and then left it there. And so hardly any miles on it. Looks very, very good. And we're so very grateful to be able to take that throughout our community and be able to see our community reach with the gospel of Christ for that. And uh, I hope that you will continue to pray for our church as we try to make these different things come to pass. We have a lot of different events on our upcoming events here, but the most important one is our community week. Now, before I get started on community week, I want to remind you that this Sunday is Mother's Day. How many remembered that already? Mother's Day, we have services at 9, 10, and 11. And we're going to be having a breakfast. Uh, I just had someone look at someone else in the room and go, Sunday's Mother's Day? Yes, Sunday is Mother's Day. And it's coming that fast. By the way, the end of this month is Memorial Day. And Community Week is two weeks from now. It's actually 10 days. So it's coming up fast. How many, how many think time is just really flying? So we want you to come and come together. Tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer. And so we want you to be prepared for these different things. And one way we would like you to be prepared for these different events is through prayer. Community Week, as we said, is less than 10 days away from now. And we need you to pray for Community Week. So we have here a 24-hour prayer chain. How many remember these 24-hour prayer chains? We've done them in the past. And what we would like to do is we would like to have different church members designate an hour of the day they're going to pray. So we want to fill every hour in the 24 hours. And then it's okay. Let's say Robert and me. We and Robert were friends. And, you know, Robert's sitting there in the back by his wonderful wife. If Robert and I both want to pray at 2 a.m., I don't know, maybe we're both weirdos who like to be up at 2 in the morning, right? If we want to both pray, it's okay. Two of us can pray at the same, same time no. slot. Yes, it can. More than one person can pray. But we're going to try to fill the whole 24 hours. So we're going to say every day between now and Community Week, we have everyone pray for the gospel of God to make a difference in lives. And so Community Week is starting up May 15th through the 18th with Evangelist Webb. And we have, starting on the Sunday night, a car show for Christ. On the Monday night, a gospel music concert. On the Tuesday night, we're having a teen night where we're inviting other youth groups to come. And that's the main part of the team. So you hear us talk about the teens, but the main part is the chalk art that the, the, uh, the evangelist is going to be doing. And we're gonna be doing that on that night. And then on the Wednesday night, we have a community fun night. That is where we're going to be doing the, 
bounce houses, slides, games, and fun nights. All those things are going to happen in there. So we need you to help us out on a couple things. Number one, pray over this list. Pick a time slot. So right now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hand this right over here. James, if you can come up and take this from me, sir. Take a time slot. And then uh, pick a time slot you can. Then hand it around. Everyone pick a time slot. You're going to pray. You could pray. Just be in an attitude of prayer. We don't need you necessarily to stop and pray for the whole hour. What we're asking you to do is take a moment and pray for that moment in that time. We also want you to give out the flyers. People can't come if they don't know it's here. So give them out the flyers. Let them know about that. That, that is the main event we are asking people to pray for and ask that God will work in our lives and let us see that event succeed. Pray for our guest speaker. We have seen on nights of this, 40 young people call on Christ as their Savior in one night. But that does not happen without prayer. That does not happen without Kathy Cook inviting her neighbor kids. That doesn't happen without Thomas and Alicia calling up a few friends. The Cervantes inviting out their grandkids. James Benham going over to some neighbors saying, hey, who would like to come? So we're asking you to go ahead, invite some people out, and do that together. Those are some of the prayer requests we're praying for. These different prayer requests you can see on this list here. And then we're asking you to go ahead and continue to pray for the Community Week event. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to have all the young people stand up. And young people go over to the side starting next week. When we bring the young people in, the young people are not going to sit in their designated section. They're going to come and sit with you. And they're going to find you. Going to come sit with you for the whole service. This way they can hear you sing and they can get ready to know you better. This way one day they can join you and be a part with you and the adult part of the service together. Okay, teenagers, don't be bashful. Go find someone you want to go pray with. If you don't know who you can pray with, just find someone that you can haven't prayed with yet. And we'll have you guys pray over these two slides over community week and over all of these different prayer requests. And then when the prayer time is done, We'll let, you, we'll let everyone be dismissed by pastor closing in a word of prayer. Pastor? Oh, by the way, one last thing. This is a camp form. This is one of the many camp forms that was handed in this last week of our young people planning on going to summer camp. If you know of a young person who'd like to go to summer camp, please let us know so we can get their camp forms filled out so we can get them to summer camp because summer camp is two months away. And that seems like it's going to go fast, but it's, it's going to be faster than you think. So continue to pray for those different prayer requests. Pastor?
Thank you, Father, once again for the privilege that we have to come together. We ask you, dear God, that uh, this prayer time has been a sweet time, uh, maybe time to get to know some other folks, some time to share prayer requests, and thank you for the young people, thank you for Pastor Joe, uh, just uh, ministering, Brother. There's a special class in the back for the young people. I'm so grateful for your willingness to, to migrate to where other people are. We kind of like to sit in our same places and do our same thing, don't we? And so then all of a sudden, when they change things up, it kind of moves things around, right? But that's okay, because then you get to meet somebody else. You say, hey, Josh is a pretty nice guy. He's not like the typical trucker trying to run me over, all right? <laughs> and he's a pretty good guy. He's not like the typical Michigan State University worker, you know, just trying to do his thing. We ask you to pray for our adult believers class on Sunday mornings. If you haven't come to a class, would you come this Sunday? Matter of fact, this Sunday, there's a 9 o'clock service. There'll be a breakfast. Then there's a 10 o'clock service where I'll be teaching 
and my daughter-in-law will be teaching uh, Women of Grace. But I invite all couples and individuals to come to my class. Of course, if you're a lady, uh, that, that class is exclusive for ladies. And then there's a children's class, Miss Marty and Kathy Cook teach. And it's a great uh, opportunity for young people to learn God's word. We thank the Lord for all that he's been doing. Right now in our savings account, we've been able to save $53,537 towards the next building. I was talking to one build and design contractor, and he said, you know, that's something. He said, but the typical building being built today is about a million bucks, he said. He said, but you started, so that's a good thing. He said, but, you know, I'm looking at about, about a million dollars to build fellowship halls or, or, or classrooms on. He said, things are just so expensive. Of course, if you know, I was talking to Laura. She was telling me their cat food went up quite a bit. And, and I was thinking about it after I walked away from her. She should train that cat to catch mice and you don't have to feed it anymore. And that's a, <laughs> but, but that's another topic. So I, won't, I probably shouldn't even have said that. But I sometimes say things that you probably shouldn't say. But uh, there we go. So there, there's, a, there's an opportunity for you. I'm going to do something that I've not done in a while. And that is... Get our, try to get my heart ready and your heart ready to have a successful meeting. What would you say, now Dick Wagner went around and distributed those community week flyers. Did you got those? We you take those out and take a look at it. All right, everybody get one of those at least? Anyone not get one from Dick? Because those are exclusive, the ones that he gave out, all right? These little flyers say everything in a nutshell. They tell you everything in a nutshell. What would you say here here at the beginning of this time, would make a meeting like this a success? What's one thing that you would look for to have? A, and it doesn't have to be, I'm not looking for anything super spiritual, uh, or it could be super spiritual. What would make, this is just introductory, for a challenge of the, the backbone of the church? I mean, you're here on a Wednesday night. Doesn't that say a lot? I mean, some of you haven't even eaten dinner yet. If you're like me, you're going to go home and eat dinner. I mean, you, you've just been at it, right? You're, it's a busy day, all right? And, and you're taking time from your busy schedule. Come and pray. And I loved it. It was sweet. I wish that you could, you could see what's going on here. We got people praying, people just uh, communing with the Lord. That's a good thing. All right, taking time from our busy, hectic schedules uh, to do just that. But we're going to come up to meetings, as Pastor Joe said, 10 days away. I know it's hard to believe. And it's on top of you. So what do you do? What would you say would be an essential for a successful meeting? Or what would you say would make it when the meeting is over, say the 18th at 9.30 at night? What would you say would have made that a success, that meeting, in your mind? Anyone? Everyone? Yes, sir. Safety, if you had safety, right? I mean, we've had as many as 200 visitors on the community fund that 200 visitors come out under the pavilion. Under the pavilion, it's like bees, all right? Ants, They're moving everywhere. Boys and girls, kids, you've got a 40-foot slide. You've got face painting. You've got food. I mean, you've got cars real close to it. You've got kids moving about, right? So thank God for all the years that we've had safety. That would be, that would be a good answer of prayer. Someone else? So yes, sir. Yeah, going to the clip where you have going on for prayer. Prayer. Before the event and during the event, that someone would want to see you. I love it. Yeah. yeah, because we've seen scores of people come to know Christ during those times. Now, how do you know, Pastor, if it's real? I don't. Just like you didn't know when I got saved. And Mrs. Olmsted didn't know in my class when I lifted my hand that I went home and went over it with my mom and dad. But, you know, 59 years later, I think you can tell it's stuck, all right? It has stuck, you know what I'm saying? So it's stuck. But at first, they didn't probably know, my parents. I think of this when I see my grandchildren and they ask me questions. They were asking me questions the other day. One of them was asking me a question. And, it was, and I turned around and I said, I thought to myself, how old are they? I mean, these were pretty deep questions they asked me. And then I tried to answer them, trying to, you know, age-appropriate answer. And then I thought, wow, did, did I have that curiosity? I don't know. 
and I'm thinking I was as dumb as a bag of rocks at that age, but, uh, you know, but uh, you know, they, some, they're inquisitive, you know what I'm saying? Kids are inquisitive. Because he was out visiting with me, as one of the grandsons was out visiting with me, and we were visiting this, the seniors, and the senior was dying. And I shared with him before we went, I even asked the parents before we go now, you know where I'm going, is this okay? You know, because they're going to, it's going to open up some questions, you know. And then we, we usually do a, I usually do like a quality dairy run or something like, do something that they like, you know, fun thing that they do, and then, then I bring them home. And so, oh, I, and so I was on my way home because something happened that he needed to go home. And he turned to me and he said, Papa, don't forget to call me and tell me how that next visit goes. And I said to him, what in the world? You know what I'm saying? And I said, because I told him I was going to go make another visit. He wanted to know how that went. So I, tech, I got home too late. Sometimes visits go on and on and on. So I text his dad and said, make sure you tell them about that. And then the next day I checked with the parents. I said, did you tell them that it really went well? The visit really went well. And it did. And I know it's because of you folks' sacrifice that I was able to go make that visit. I never look at this as my job. This is my privilege. And that visit I made, it was ordained of the Lord. They were home. They were ready. They had been to two of our services, Good Friday and Easter Sunday morning breakfast. And they were interested. And when I knocked on that door, I said, oh, this is like, like I was a hero or something. You know, I'm looking around, who are they talking about? You know what I'm saying? And invite me in, and I was just welcomed. It was just a welcoming time. Because I've had them before where people close the blinds or they'll turn the vacuum on and act like they can't hear you. You know, they don't, they don't want anything to do with you, you know. And, but that was different. And so you don't know what, I think it's the preparation of prayer, of people praying. And also, you folks have made it. Like every floor in this building was vacuumed before you came in tonight. And before you come in again on Monday, or Sunday rather, it'll be done again. So it's clean. To some folks, it's not a big deal, you know. Some of the people I go and visit in their homes, no big deal. They got iguanas running around. They got parakeets running around, everything, all right? And the other folks, it has to be pristine, but they don't want any part of it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we, we, we're trying to do everything so we can meet that, that high requirement. And the other folks, it's no big deal to them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, we had a three-second rule at my house. If it dropped on the floor and you picked it up within three seconds, you could eat it, all right? But other people, if it drops on the floor, you got to throw it away, all right? It just gave us more minerals, all right? And so we, did, and we just kept on going, all right? And uh, maybe that's the reason why we have the issues that we have in my family, all right? I don't know. But, you know, every family's different on what their criteria is and uh, what you expect. So we're trying to meet, meet a criteria that's safe and that's decent and good. Now, I don't know what politically will happen to our country. Just recently, I was quite disappointed what happened in Michigan. I prayed that there would be equity, that there would be fairness when they were restructuring the districts. And it wasn't. And as a result of that, and it always is that way, there's always a political bias that goes about. We got the call today. What was the call today? For years, I prayed that God would let our church be opened up so that we could be an outlet so that hundreds of people would come in the door and we could give them gospel tracts and treat them hospitality with hospitality and kindness. Well, because they redistrict everything, they don't need our church for a precinct, so we're not going to be a polling place anymore. We have right now one member who's a piano player who found out about our church by coming and voting here. Then you got Lisa Abraham. She came to our church for voting and then said, what time are your services? And then she got saved and I baptized her on Easter. So we had two adults who are right now working children and we don't have that door open anymore. And we, we have no recourse in it. But I thought, whatever they do, I hope that they don't. And they did. They restructured it and go on. There's nothing we can do about it. It's all about how when they redo these things, then they don't need some at one place and then another at another place. And then there it is. And then also, we're a church. We, we never collected anything from anyone. We've never taken any donations from the township. Uh, and we never did. Now, I know some of the other churches did. And uh, 
and that we would not because I did not want the state involved in our church business. All right, so we, we even got special insurance rider. So if someone were to trip and fall, that we'd have a rider here. Thank God we never had that happen. But you, you got to be prepared for it, you know. And so we don't know what the future is going to hold. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be better. All right. I'm pretty sure that the world is getting worse than better. But, and I'm a p pretty positive person, you know. I, I'm looking forward to God's goodness. But I don't think I'm going to be leaving to my grandchildren a better world than what my grandparents left for me. It seems to be getting worse. They've redefined marriage. They've redefined people. I went to my credit union, and I was just uh, cashing a check um, and putting money in my account. And it's the first time I just looked. You know, I was talking to the person across, and I was trying to figure out now. And then I looked at the badge, and it said, they or them. It had their name, and then it said, they or them. You identify them, they or them. Well, I read about that, where people could identify which gender they want to be, but instead of saying she or her, she identified herself as they or them. And I thought to myself, well, it's probably appropriate. It's probably appropriate. Because if you look into the scriptures, many times not just one demon comes into a person, many demons come into a person. So if you want to be identified as they or them, then there's something that's going on inside of your life, all right, that's not for Christ, all right? We are a legion. We are a legion, right? So when I gave them a gospel track after I did my business, I made sure they counted excellent. That's very important to me as a business person. Everything was done just perfect. I complimented them. Excellent job. So I'd like to share with you an opportunity to come to our church's Special car show for Christ, an opportunity. Okay. And took it aside. So that was nice. You know, I didn't know. Maybe I was going to get rejected like you did the other day. All right. But that happens. All right. But it hasn't happened lately. All right. And I'm trying to pray before I hand that because I actually prayed, Lord, help her to receive this because it has the plan of salvation uh, inside of it. It's not a long exhortation, but it has a short. So perhaps she'll come to know Christ. Perhaps she'll come out. Because I had some, for our car show before, had one guy that had a washer in his ear that was so big that it looked, seriously, it was hanging all, did you see that guy? It was hanging all the way down here. And he had kept putting them in his ear to make his earlobe get bigger and bigger. And I remember seeing it when I was a kid, because we used to get National Geographic. And, we, and they used to have those pins and splinters and things they put on them. And I thought, amazing, isn't it? right here in our country, the different culture that we have. But God can help everyone to learn his word. Amen? Oh, you got a new customer, James, so you better hand some more papers out, all right? And Dick, you got a new customer, you better hand out some more papers. So what else would make it essential? Would make this essential meeting a success? We just said prayer to see someone saved. We said if there was safety, someone else. Yes, ma'am. Weather, if the Lord would give us decent weather, that would be a blessing. We have had, I will never forget Terry Nevins looking at me, and I said, man, I just was, and I got up there and I was going to preach, and I said, friends, I'm so sorry for the weather. And hey, Dick, I'm competing with you right now. And it's not working. All right, come on. Ushers have to be quiet, all right? No. <laughs> Pearl, will you take care of him, please? Thank you. So I got up there and I was apologizing, and afterwards a man came up to me and he said, I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't bad weather. It was our car show for Christ. He said, I had other things to do, but because it was bad weather, I could bring my vehicle here, and I didn't have something else to do. He said, tonight I called on Christ as my Savior. Yes. So it was a rebuke to me, because I was just praying for good weather. So I guess I'm going to pray for, Lord, whatever your will be done. Amen. Because I, I, my barber, I, he was cutting my hair, and I told him about what we were having going on. And he said, well, I'll come and help you with that. And he came, and he came every year for four years and helped us with it. He didn't even have any children here. And he came out there and helped with the children's slide. And he would go out there with the children game. So sometimes folks want to come and just be a help because they love the energy and the excitement and the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay. This is one of those kind of events that we can, we need your help. All right? If you could come an hour early 
If you could stay an hour late every night, because I, I don't leave for an hour and a half after the event's over because we're picking up, because we don't want the critters to, invent, you know, to come back in the building afterwards. If you leave popcorn or you leave chips, you leave stuff laying around and it happens, then they'll come in the building. That's the one thing the exterminator told me. You're living between two, two fields and you got a farm over there. He said, the chances of you not getting critters in your building are just about zero. He said, but if you keep the food off, you keep all food packaged and closed, he said, and you stay with us maintenance, he said, it'll be a lot better. He said, but, you know, that's just how it goes, Pastor. He said, we love it that you built right here. We just love it, all right? Uh, because we're going to have, we have security in our business, and they do, all right? It's like the weed company. They have security this time of the year, all right? This, everybody wants to get rid of those weeds, all right? And so they work with it. What else would make it a success? Yes, sir? Guests and visitors. Guests and visitors, amen. Just think of it. If all of us come, I love to see you. I do. I look forward to seeing you, all right? I agreed to share, and on the way in, I was asking one of the kids, how old are you? And she said, I'm, I'm, I'm eight, I'm nine. I said, oh, what grade are you in? And, she, and then and she, oh, I said, okay, you'll be going right back there. And Sharon looked at me and said, I'm not going to tell you how old I am. Because <laughs> she was the next one in line. But I was trying to get the children in the right room. That was the first time they came tonight. Aurora came. She usually comes on Sundays, but she came tonight. So it was a blessing. Thank you for bringing them. So, yeah, what a blessing if you could invite someone out who normally comes on Wednesday and you could invite them to come on a Sunday night or a Monday night or a Tuesday night. Now, the best way to start a meeting, every evangelist I've spoke to, they've told me, are all the things you've already said. All the things you've already said. This evangelist that we have right now has actually printed up a book, a little booklet, and others have done the same thing. And I read through his booklet, and you have a picture of him right there on that paper that James discreetly handed to you, all right? All right? Hint, hint, all right? And... And it has a picture of the couple and what they do. And this is their newsletter they sent out. I've been receiving this newsletter from them since 2008. All right? I heard about them before that. I signed up for their newsletter. And um, the reason why I signed up for the newsletter, because I thought, wow, this is a sharp guy. And he wrote me. He said, I looked on your website, and I think that our church... Your church could be helped if my wife and I could come and minister sometime, pray about it. So I've been praying about it. Then we reached out to him when we had this window. We were going to have the magician, the Christian magician who ministers the public schools who came to our church a couple years ago. But then they had to take a sabbatical from the field because their little boy who has autism had to have certain surgeries. And so... Uh, they, but now they're back on the field, but we, we have this company. We're going to secure them in the future. All right, his name is David Korn. He's down in Houston, Texas. But this couple is Barry Webb Evangelistic Team. And this is the letter that they mail out to preachers. On the back side is a letter that I wrote out to the church of what we're looking for. And so I'm going to share with you tonight this as a preparatory session of what we could do if we want to have a successful meeting to honor and glorify the Lord. I would invite you to remember what the scripture says. And, you know, there's many passages that deal with this topic. But the one that I was thinking that uh, would be an encouragement to us as a church family would Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Who wants to have good success? I want to have good success. Amen? I don't want to be a dud. Amen? It doesn't matter if I'm going fishing with my grandchildren in Sharp Park, catch and release, and we're just trying to catch a little bluegill. I want one of them to catch one. All right, because it's so exciting for them to get something on that line. They'll put a little bread on there and a little hook on there, and they throw it in there. They catch something. They're just so, you would have thought it was a 300-pound sailfish when they pull that in. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not even something that we would eat, but it's just something that they would enjoy, you know. So I want to have success with that. I want to have success 
if I mow my yard, then I get the, the line straight. Amen? I want to have success if I'm vacuuming your floor, that when I get done, I look, there's no more crumbs. All right? It's clean. So I want to have success for this. So he wrote a tangible thing that we could do because I'm, I was all of a sudden it occurred to me, I was talking to some folks and I was sharing with them what's involved in having a meeting. And I actually went to a meeting last night. Some of our folks in our church send their children to Christian school here in the area and their church that hosts the school was hosting a meeting. I know who the speaker was because he and I sit on the Jehovah Jireh board of directors. And so when I heard that he was going to speak there, I went there and I invited Brother Eddie to go with me. And Brother Eddie was kind enough not to leave me sitting there by myself and came and we sat. And I thought it was a good message, didn't you, Brother? I enjoyed it. It was a message on um, organizing your life. And each night he was talking about different topics, you know, and how you might grow your life. And last night was the night where you grow your life by being faithful in stewardship. And I thought, that's perfect. I needed to hear that. And he even said at the beginning, hey, look, if you're already doing stewardship and you're already doing tithing and offering, then this can just be an attaboy. All right, this can be, yeah, just keep doing what's right. Amen? That's what this can be. But for those who aren't doing it, and he said, by the way, according to the statistics that he had researched from, I think it was, I've seen statistics by polling companies and by churches that do surveys, less than 5% of all Christians give faithfully to their local church. Well, we know that. Uh, we, we, I can tell you right now, I, uh, going back on the talk about the cat food, everything's gone up. But interestingly enough, nothing has gone up to operate a church. No, that's not right. That would be nice if it went. Electricity's gone up. Diesel has gone up. Diesel was the highest. When we filled the bus up the other day, it was the highest it's been in the history of diesel. Yeah. We're paying over $5 a gallon for our diesel bus. <coughs> and we're about seven miles to a gallon. So that means that we make a trip into Grand Ledge, you know, and then you start moving around in there, or you make a trip into Potterville tonight, you know, they'll, they'll spend $40 tonight, all right, by the time that they get it there and get it back. Is it worth it? Well, if one young person or one adult, all right, or both get closer to the Lord or come to the Lord, it was a good investment, amen? amen. The neat thing is we're going to charge extra now like they did in the congregation church. They used to charge for each pew. So the Benham family paid for their own pew because they couldn't trust people to bring tithes and offerings. So instead, they had a pew charge. All right? That's not biblical, so you can't do that. But that's what they used to do. And they had a pew charge. Really. Go back and look in your history. Because the people won't give n normally. They don't give. And many people, I mean, my goodness. You go to a grocery store, you see how things go up. Gas pump, right? If you go to a restaurant, you see how things go up. But the church also has those same things. And the thing is, we're asking a guest to come to our church and preach. We haven't had a guest evangelist for a little while because we schedule one in the spring, one in the fall. Remember when we had Tom Farrell? The building was filled. And our church was very generous with Tom Farrell. Over $2,000 offering you gave. Now since then, we haven't had that. Now we're going to have a guest come. So we'll need our church family who's blessed. Do you think that the visitors who come in the door will pay for the Barry Webb family? No. They're there to get the free hot dog. I'm serious. We've already had people call. What are we having for dinner on the car show? And we said, well, we're going to have delicious hot dogs. I call them tube steaks. They're tube steaks. Really? Oh, how much are the free? Oh, nice. Can we bring anyone? Oh, yeah. Everyone can have one? Oh, yes. So look for it. I already had someone contact the church today for when we can bring them more food. They've never been to our church. But they want us to bring them for food, and they want us to bring them food for free. And they want us to bring the food for free and put it in their house. They haven't asked yet for us to come over and cook it for them, but <laughs> you never know. that will come. I'm serious. 
No way, Pastor. Oh, yes. Every day I get a call like that. A little while ago, Dave came off and said, was that your phone quacking, Pastor? I get phones quacking. I'm, I, that's my ringer. All right. All hours of the day with people with different needs. Guess what? We're glad that we can be here to try to help them. Now, we obviously uh, are not going to give away your chairs. All right. We are obviously going to have to have security. Right. We obviously have to keep things safe. Because when you have folks come in from the public, there's all kinds of folks that come in. Not necessarily folks that come in just to say, oh, you got hot dogs? You're going to have the word of God? Woohoo! Give it to me. No, some folks come in to see if they can rifle through somebody's purse. Or they come through to see if they can take things. So, unfortunately, that's part of the clientele. Satan's working, you know, this, he's the prince and the power of the air. So we'll need people. We'll need people like Tom's just walking around, just looking like a good dad, looking around, just watching, making sure things are right, and making sure that you stay safe, and making sure no kid gets taken advantage of. We have great history here in our church. Amen? And I had someone ask me that today, and I'd sit and I thought, yeah, it's been 32 years I've been here at this church, you know, and we haven't lost one kid that we didn't want to lose. Amen? And that's really something you think about that. I've had some parents leave their kids one week. It was a Sunday morning, and then I was standing around here. I'm waiting for the parents to show up, and finally, about 30 minutes after church was over, they called. And they said, uh, is, uh, I just make up a name, is Johnny there? I said, yes, Johnny's there. Oh, well, how long can you stay there with him? I said, well, I probably need to go home and get something to eat. I've got to come back tonight, but uh, you know, there's, my wife and I are here with him. You want to come back? Well, we got a few things to do. Pick up at Myers, but then we'll come back. Would that be all right? I said, probably not. You'd probably better come here first, you know. We don't mind watching them at Sunday school and watching them during the church, but, you know, you need to probably get the shopping done in between. Well, I had to get my hair done. I had to get the, the dog groomed. And I said, and we're glad to help you with that. We really are. But you, you probably need to come on back. Well, you know, I get some gas and I'll be on in. I said, all right, we'll wait for you to come in. But you know what? Yeah, it's just a... So full service, all right? <laughs> full service opportunity. You don't think so, Pastor. No, that's, those are the mild stories, all right? And they continue, all right? And you don't want to become caustic or cynical over it. It's just part of it, all right? I, I, last year, we had our car show for Christ, and then we had our community fun night. There was a game, and one of the children came up to me, and they were upset because they said that one of our sponsors cheated them. I said, now, how did they cheat you? Well, they didn't give me a goldfish. I said, well, did you get, you had to throw something in a little cup and then they get the goldfish. Did you throw it in the cup? No, but everybody else got a goldfish. I said, well, you know, that's life. You have to play by the rules. You want me to go over there and get you a goldfish for free? Go, would you? No. Go win it. Go win it. Learn life, all right? You know, and really, that was a good life lesson. They didn't pay for that goldfish and, and they're going to win it, all right? They don't win it. I'd rather that goldfish go belly up than to give that that kid and teach him the wrong lesson, all right? Because you know when they get home, that's what's going to happen, all right? Here's a couple things that Brother Barry Webb said. The best preparation for revival, boom, Phil Combs had nailed this one. It's prayer. Where's that prayer sheet at? Who's got that prayer sheet? Did it get all around, sir? Who didn't get a chance to see that 24-hour prayer sheet? Would you lift your hand in the air? Here's a guy who didn't get one. Oh, Rick, when you get done signing it, will you take it to that sweet lady in the back? Would you lift your hand in the air, ma'am? That lady? And then, ma'am, would you give it to that couple over there? All right. There you go. Now, the rules are this. You have to find the hours that no one else wants to pray. Don't find the hours that's convenient to you. Let me share with you. I know that some of you are looking at me and you're saying, if it's easy, it's probably I'm not putting very much effort into it. Make myself inconvenient. Guess what? I think about it. Easy's okay. All right? I try to put all the things at, at level to be able to reach. But the things I'm really going to work towards, put those out of the reach. All right? And guess what? You work towards it. Well, I was trying to be honest. Sure. I've seen some of that work. Not, I won't get named on it, but if I put my name on it, am I really going to be up at 2 in the morning? I know. So I, I just... I'm now, I don't think that's wrong. I think you got to go with what you go with, all right? Some of us are up at 2 in the morning, so it's no big deal, all right? 
So I know Ruth is, all right? So she'll write down there. But, you know, other people aren't, you know what I'm saying? Usually 3 30, 4 o'clock, I'm rolling out of the bed. So that's a good time for me, all right? Everybody's got to figure out where you are and work on it. But that's usually a time when I'm working on the rowing machine. So I'm going to have to figure out something to do, concentrate on that. I've got to figure out what you're going to do and work it, all right? Number two, prayer lists are helpful. We've got one right here. Fill it out. Now, look at this. We've got another list. <laughs> It's a worker list. Why would you do that? Because you have only given me one full-time staff member in Pastor Joe and one administrative assistant in Kylan. She's homeschooling three kids. So I need your help. Seriously. Well, I don't think I can do anything. You can. You, you realize that our skill set is being breathing, all right, standing upright, all right, if you want to bring a long chair, you, we can even find a lawn chair for you to sit in. We, that's what, really, seriously, all right? Because we're not looking for you to come up and do a, a message. We're hiring a guy to do that. I mean, honestly, maybe that seems crude to say it that way, but we actually are bringing in a hired gun, all right, to preach the time, all right? He's going to preach all the messages. Now, if he gets sick, I'll preach him. I'm ready to go, all right? But it's better if he can do it because then I can concentrate I'm trying to develop relationships and fill in the gaps. You know what I'm saying? You know, that makes a difference. But so it makes a difference for you. You know why I love Robert? He always shakes my hand, looks right at me. He's a friend. I know if I needed something, he'd be there. You know why I really like his wife? She can cook like nobody you've ever tasted, all right? He's a good, very good cook, all right? And she's a friend, all right? They'll be there for me, all right? That's a neat thing. But nobody knows them that are just walking in the door there because they haven't had a chance to meet him. Once they get to meet him, they see a nice couple, all right? So this is what this event will do for you, all right? What kind of things do you need? Well, need help with the kitchen, all right? I wouldn't normally need help with the kitchen, but uh, my main kitchen worker's got to have surgery. She's not going to be able to be there, so we need help with the kitchen. What will you need help with? Not very much, but we'll need help. There's always something, all right? We're going to pre-cook all the food because it means hot dogs, right? There's enough chemicals in those hot dogs. Seriously, we could freeze them till next year and they'd be good, all right? All right? All right? You know that. Have you ever tried to read the, the you know, all right, if you can't go to sleep at night, go and get your hot dog, frozen bag of hot dogs, and just start reading the, the ingredients in there, all right? By the time you finish, you'll be asleep, all right? And uh, there you go, all right? Then, then, but we are going to have, I understand, don't, don't hold me to this, but I'm pretty sure we're having pulled pork sandwiches on one of the things, so we've got to cook all that. And that. But that's going to already be pre-cooked, all right? Decorating and set up. Clean up the kitchen. That's a lot of work, but every night has to be done. It is. It's a lot of work. One time I didn't ask anybody to help me, and I did one of these things by myself, and, that, and people came up and asked me afterwards, you want to help? I said, oh, no, no, that's no big deal. And then at the end of the night when it was all over, I said, what is wrong with you? The next time someone asked to help, accept them to help. I was trying to let them have the opportunity just to enjoy the event. But many hands do make light work, all right? And if you're working 60, 70, 80 people, that's 60, 70, 80 things that need to be done and done right because you don't want to call the next day or two days later people being sick because things aren't kept chilled or things aren't heated, you know, the right temperatures. We've, we've taken pride in going to the classes, Pastor Joe and I, and we've learned all the food safety things, and we keep it to that level, just like a restaurant. We do that every year because we're a food pantry. We want to have a good reputation. All right? Servers. Servers? Servers. The servers that are needed. Uh, kids workers. You know, like when you have that community fun night, <sighs> there's kids everywhere, so they need helpers for those things. Clean up the fellowship hall. Sweeping, dust mopping, mopping. Cleaning the tables down. Because the next day it happens all over again. And every day it has to be done. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. When, if we don't do it Wednesday, then we're in here on Thursday morning doing it. Because you can't, you can't leave it here. It's got to be cleaned up. Greeters, bathroom cleanup. Not a, not a really lush, uh, luxurious job, but it needs to be done, right? If there's not TP in there, as expensive as toilet paper is today, 
You know, people are, you know, we have the special roles that are hooked up there, so, but we, we got to have enough roles there. You got to have the soap dispensers filled. You got to have things clean. Sometimes people put too much paper in there. It's got to be plunged out, right? All those kind of things. Then the food list. Food list? Well, he said he got food. Yeah, but there's always things that go along with the food. When you're hosting 200 people on one night, or 100 people on one night, or even 70 people, there's a lot of things. So it's a list right here for you to fi fill out. So there's two lists here. And then there's a third list of things that need to be done to the building before it even begins. You just put your initial next to it if you could do it. What do you mean? Pull the weeds, you know, clean the windows, this and this and this. A lot of churches do this monthly. I was talking to my brother Dan down in Sarasota. Every month they have a community work day at the church. And everybody just comes out. And, we don't do it that often because we know everybody's really busy. We don't have that much traffic. But we probably should do it more often. But you see something needs to be done, you let us know. There's a sidewalk out here that was cracked. Phil and Teresa said, we'll take care of it. I said, okay, I'll get you stuff. Oh, no, we'll get it. It was done. I loved it, all right? I could have do it. We've done it, Rick. You helped me do it. You volunteered to help me do it. But it sure was nice to have that part done, right? One more thing you didn't, and then you could just trim the trees and do the other things you're working on. All right, so we'll send this around. After you get it, fill it out, and then if you want to think about it, then you can come back and look at it. Just keep sending it around. Let's see if we can get it around in the next 10 minutes in the whole building. How about the next thing? Preaching, showing the need, or uh, is, this is my job. I have to preach to show the need for self-searching and confession, urging attendance. May I share something with you? Sure of the world, there's going to be an appointment that you're going to have 15th, the 16th, the 17th, or the 18th. A double dog dare you not to have it happen. It will happen. May I share something with you? God's house is important too. So, you have to decide, right? I have to decide. If family shows up, well, I tell you what I learned from my mom and dad, because our relatives always would show up to go fishing, take a boat ride, you know, come over and just, you know, chew the fat. And my parents said, always have time with them, talk to them. It was time to go to church. We'd jump in the car and go. We'll be back. See you in an hour and a half. That's rude, Pastor. No, it wasn't rude. They were trying to set a standard for us kids. They have Uncle Doyle, Aunt Virginia, Grandma Rozak, Grandma and Grandpa Jackson come over. We're still going to go to church. We invite them, but we're going to go to church. And then we come back. They're there. They come on back. They knew what we were doing. We had told them before. Their schedule had changed, but we needed to do this for our family. You know, if you make church a centerpiece in your life, it'll bless your family. It'll bless you. You can build some friendships. You know who Laura Wesley is? Laura Wesley's a gem. You know, you're not going to get to know her unless you come, share, be a service, be in servant to the Lord. It'll be a help to you. You cannot overemphasize that everyone should attend all the meetings. Guess where I'm going to be at on the 15th at 945, right here. 945, you're going to be here? Well, actually, I'll be here about 730, but 945, I'll see you for that meeting. Why 945? Because that's the first meeting of the meetings. We're going to have that Sunday school meeting, then the 11 o'clock meeting. They're going to bring a 50-foot or 55-foot fifth wheel. That evangelist is, I don't know how long it is, but someone told me it was that long. Big, long fifth wheel. Are you with me here? And when they bring it, it's going to be sitting right out here in our parking lot. And we're going to give them the water and give them the electricity. You know how much they charge us to come? Zero. Zero? They don't even charge for fuel. How can they do that? Because they come by faith. So they're hoping that people like me will give to the Lord for them. And they're hoping people like you will. And so we need to pray about that, amen, and see what God would have you do. How much would it cost you to drive a truck and a fifth wheel from Maryland to here? $600. Then how much would it cost you to go back? So we, as a church family, aren't going to have to buy a hotel that week. We rented a hotel 
for a group that's coming here in June. I rented two hotel rooms. The hotel rooms went up. I rented two hotel. I rented them early because I want to get in on the thing. And they went up twenty dollars each hotel room. We're going to put six college and career people are going to come and sing, and you know, hundred two hundred and forty dollars, two rooms. All right. It's good. It's a Holiday Inn. It's not real exclusive, but it gives them breakfast and it gives them enough room. They, two of them have to share a bed in the room, but they don't mind doing that. I didn't want them to have to come in here like they told me in some churches. They come in and the church gives them blankets and they sleep on the pews. Yeah. I've taken youth groups before and people, and we've gone and ministered on mission trips, but you expect that on a mission trip. But when you got kids going to college for ten, twelve, fourteen thousand dollars a year and they're going to minister in your church. I think asking them to sleep on the floor or sleep in the Sunday school room on the tables, not a good idea. Nor would it be for an evangelist, amen. I think we bring them in, we need to pay for their fuel. We need to give them I don't know. I'm glad that you've given me a salary. You've given me a salary now thirty two years. You have no contract with me. But you've done that for 32 years, and never once have you missed giving me a salary. Never once have I gone hungry. If I went hungry, it was because I choose to go hungry, but not because you didn't give me food. You always gave me food. Ever since, by faith, and I talked to Dave Comstock and to Jason, I said, I'm going to ask the church to take on Pastor Joe. Ever since we took Pastor Joe on, we've made every payroll for Pastor Joe. 13 years now, every payroll. And every year we've given him a raise. We gave him a $25 a week raise at the beginning of the year. And you know that's not going to cut it with inflation, all right? But that's all that we had in our account. We're 19% down on giving than we were last year at this time. But it's not because people aren't giving. It's because some people don't have it to give. And some people who've moved away, some people who've died, when they die, funny thing is they don't keep giving, all right? Because they're dead, all right? So that's what happens, all right? So what do you do? Well, we have a vineyard out back. And we're just bottling that vineyard and saving those bottles, and we're going to sell them at a higher market. No, we don't have a vineyard, all right? All right? So what do you do? Well, you, you tighten the budget. That's what you have to do. But I can't do that for a young uh, Christian family. So we're bringing, I just gave that to you for your illustration. That's what we're doing for this family that's coming in. So he's coming in. And we got him in to be here Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So if we can pay for his fuel, that would be good. Amen? That would be right. If we can give him meals while he's here, I bet you he'd be grateful for that. You wouldn't want him up here with his stomach growling, right? Preaching and teaching. And then if we give him a salary for the week, that would be good. So these are things we need to do. So things that I can do at the meeting is pray every hour. Where's that prayer list at? Do we get it around everywhere? Okay, did everybody get a chance at that? All right, would you hang that when you leave by the water fountain? So if you thought another time, because some of us could pray more than one hour. You know what I'm saying? And this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take all the names of people from the church directory and go through and pray for them. If you'd like one of those, you see me, and I'll send you one email, or I can give you one. Please don't sell it to Amway or to some business. All right, we don't want that. All right. Shackley or whoever you're, Avon, all right? I'm not against any of those things, but we don't want that market marketed, all right? And then secondly, after I do that, then I'm going to pray for all the missionaries. I'm going to pray for this missionary, this evangelist that we're having, all right? And then plan on being in every service and invite one person. I've been inviting one person for each night. So invite someone for Sunday morning, someone else for Sunday night. And then sometimes they can't come on one service, but they'll come the next one. See what I'm saying? And then you got to be here uh, when they come. That will be a good thing. It's essential that God's important. How many agree with me that God's important? Say amen. amen. Now, I believe he is. He's so important that it was because of a meeting like this that your associate pastor got saved. Did you know that? You remember that, Kathy. We had an evangelist come, and in one week of meetings, we were renting the Waverly Middle School. They moved us to five different rooms in one week of meetings. Every time we went there, they moved us to another place. People got lost. People, you know, it's, it was crazy. But during that week of meetings, you know what happened? My youngest son understood that he needed to be saved. 
And he came home that night and told his mom and dad, and we led him to Christ in his bunk bed. Amen? Amen. Also, a lady came the second time she ever came to our church. You know what her name was? Mildred Harris. And she couldn't stay because she was sick again. But she said, this is my church. She got saved in her home. We led her to Christ. Unbeknown to us, she left us in her trust. And it paid for the property and all the drywall you have right here. And I didn't think she had anything. We used to bring her leftovers. Once a month, we'd have church suppers, and we'd bring her leftovers wrapped in plastic or styrofoam or, you know, wrapped in aluminum foil because I thought she was so poor. She was, she was so wealthy. <laughs> she could buy the restaurant, all right? And we only got one-fifth of her, of her trust that was divided in half that paid for all this. She was a cafeteria worker at Michigan State University. Might want to get around those Michigan State employees, all right? <laughs> Next thing, promote the, me the meetings. Dick gave you a paper. That was special. But I happen to know that right behind Robert, there's a whole stack of them. You don't just have to give out that one. You can give out as many as you want. How are you doing it, Pastor? Well, I got myself a baggie. And I had that baggie in my car. And I have them right in that baggie to keep them fresh. And then every time I get a car wash, I put a tip right in that, and I give a tip. Every time I go to Panera Bread and get my daughter-in-law a cup of coffee or me a cup of coffee, we're in the coffee club, then I give them a tip. And I give them one of these. They've never turned away a tip. And they never turn away the paper that I'm giving it to them. See what I'm saying? So that's, that's how I do it. Today, I've already handed out a dozen of them. All right? And I keep track of how I'm going to do it and try to beat that tomorrow. I'm going to try to give away 13 tomorrow. All right? But I can't do it unless I work at it. But what are you going to do out of it? Well, just like that they or them at the credit union that I told you about, I hope they or them come. All right? I'll introduce you to they or them. All right? I hope they come and come to know the Lord. If they are to know the Lord, get right with the Lord. And then finally, put a love offering in on Sunday. Please don't wait till Wednesday, because Wednesday we'll be outside running all around if the weather's good. If you could, bring it in on Sunday, and let's all of us give on Sunday like it really is important to us, because it is important to us to help this guy. You know, some could give $500, some could give $250, some could give $100, some could give $75, some could give $50, or whatever amount the Lord leads you. I said this one time, and my son came up to me and said, are you serious? I said, yes. Some could give $5,000 to the next step. And the next week, someone gave $5,000. I don't know who could give. I don't even know who is who, right? I'm bringing leftovers to people who could buy and sell the restaurant, thinking I'm being a help to them, and they're writing me in their trust, all right? But what is the answer? Do what you can do, what God leads you to do. If you can't be there on that Sunday, then give it before. I already gave mine tonight, all right? You can give any time, but it'll be a help to that work, and that will please the Lord Jesus Christ. Any questions or comments of what we're trying to do? We're trying to be a success for the Lord. If you can help us by being, and I'm going to be around afterwards. you got questions. And there may be other things that will come up that we'll need to do that you can help with. But there's two sheets to sign up for workers. And then right behind that is a list of things that need to be done in the building. You can't do it this weekend. You can do it next weekend. You need to come in at a special time. We'll make you get you access at it. Obviously, weather, a lot of things are based on the weather. Like, it'd be nice to have the whole pavilion floor all power washed. We do that every year, so when people come out there, you know, the birds make their nest up in there, and you know, all that's in there, so we got to clean it all up. And then every time we have a meeting, we had to clean it again. We understand, but one good time between now and the community week would be great. Well, do you got a power washer? Sure. Do you have a hose? Sure. Do you, you have some time? You know, that'd be good. You could help out with that. Uh, there's other things. There's a whole list there. You can see it. Any questions, comments, or input? Yes, sir. You start praying tonight and pray every day through Wednesday, the 18th. Yep. So start now. So if you've already signed on, that's what we would like you to do. Start praying. Start praying. And if you didn't sign up for a night time, you can pray at night anyways. I found this. The Lord listens to our prayer no matter what time we pray. Amen. I've had this happen to me. I've 
put it on my phone. I've got this smartphone. It's a lot smarter than me. And I put it for five minutes before, and then someone calls me. Right? And when people call me, they expect me to answer the phone because they got a need, right? So guess what? I took their call. After I got them ministering to them, I said, and don't call me back. I've got to be praying to God. <laughs> no. no, deal with them. And then what do you do? You hang up, and then you pray to the Lord. Amen? That's all you can do, right? Maybe you're working during the time you signed up to pray. Then you can pray at the top of every, you know, quarter. Pray for it. You know what you can do, you know. The Lord hears us, amen? Wouldn't it be nice if you go up to that evangelist and you look right at him saying, Evangelist Barry Webb, I prayed for you every day at 12 noon. Thank you for coming. I know that will encourage him. It encourages me when James comes up and sometimes James just calls me, Hey, Pastor, let's pray. I, I love that. I mean, actually, to me, that's, it's like someone handing me a $100 bill. Really. Or maybe more than that. All right? Because it's just, it means you think, you're thinking about what's in my life. You know what I'm saying? Let's pray about this. <laughs> what? You've been doing that for, how long have we known each other? You've been doing that for several years now. That's a blessing. You know, you do that for other people. That encourages them. All right? Or send them a card. I'm praying for you today. Or I prayed for you yesterday. You know? That's a help to people. I know Tom Hahn would like you to pray for him. He sure doesn't want to have to live anywhere but in his own home. He wants to die in his own home. But they're not going to let him go back to his home, he said, unless he has someone there. So he's at a rehab home in Charlotte, but he needs your prayer. I know Mary told me, Pastor, I didn't sign anything. I can leave here if I want. But she can't. She needs your prayer. I know that, you know, Mrs. Arnold needs your prayer. Jan and Lynn. Jan's been fighting a sinus infection. Lynn's in the home. Remember he got COVID after he had the heart procedure and never been out. You know? Elsie Arnold, she could use your prayer. She told me, I'm comfortable here. They knew what was best for me. I can't even get up and walk. I'm in this bed. She could use your prayer. Those are the elderly, right? And then there's a lot of other people, like the Lotempios, Daniel Lotempio. Seven years we've been praying for Daniel Lotempio. Miracle baby. Trisimony 13. That's amazing. They don't usually live past one year old. Amazing. All right, we'll go to the Lord in prayer and we'll send you on your way. Thank you for listening to me on how we might have success. You've been thinking about it and you want to come back and add something? That's okay. You can call me. We'll add your name. You need to get off of something? We'll take you off. See what you can do. Maybe your schedule, you can change things up in your schedule. All right? And try to get there. Maybe put in some time. I remember one couple that we had in our church one time, they told me, guess what we're going to do? I said, what's that? I said, we're taking our vacation week during community week so we can be here and work every day. I said, I guess what you are. And they said, what? I said, you're my favorite couple in the whole world. Thank you for helping me. I mean, you're going to come and give extra time to serve the Lord? That's a blessing. Now, I know not everyone can do that. But if you can come, that'd be a good thing. If you can pray, that's even a better thing. If you can give... What a blessing to that evangelist. We're not taking one dollar of the love offering that's given for him. We're just going to hand it all over to him. Well, who's going to pay for the church? You. You've paid for the church. And every time we have one of these meetings, our church offerings go down, and the love offering for the evangelist goes up. Shouldn't be that way, but that's what happens. It's just natural. The tendency is, well, if I'm going to give to this guy, I'm not going to give the Lord's work. But we need the Lord's work to keep going. Amen. How many agree with me that missionaries are important? Amen? But we won't have any missionaries if we don't have this missionary plant right here. We have to take care of this plant. And right now we're seeing all around our country, the churches, are some of them are struggling. Others are flourishing, and that's a good thing. But there's a lot that's struggling. So let's pray for God to help us to do our part and see this evangelist go forward. And this could be a catalyst where we could see someone saved and baptized and following God. Thank you for letting me share with you the, what evangelist Barry Webb said are essentials for successful meetings. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Help us, dear God, to partner with evangelist Barry Webb and see people say, see people get right, that we could serve you, we could roll up our sleeves and help. 
We know, Lord, this is a great opportunity for our church. Never forget, four years ago, Wendy went home to heaven, and we continued with the meetings, and person after person came up and told me they were praying for me. What a blessing that was. And I know, I know there were people saved. There were people who got right with you. There were people who were sensitive to you because you worked in those meetings. Now bless this meeting, Lord. We've come out of a, a pandemic, they tell us, and now we're trying to go forward for you. And church, like our church, we, we don't have the attendance that we did have at one time. And we don't have all the givers that we did have one time, but we have a good spirit. And we have a willingness and a very good speaker coming. So we ask you to give us that safety. Give us those prayer warriors. Lord, give us just the weather that you want us to have. Give us the support that we need to meet the need of that evangelist. Help us, Lord, to do our part. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Amen. Amen.